Every ultra-violent and adult superhero show ever made, explored. Long gone are the days of with great power comes great responsibility. Cut to 2022. It is all about with great power comes great violence. And to be honest, superheroes today are not exactly reserved for kids anymore. As much as the idea of a superhero has changed, the shows created today are understandably made for the adult audience to get entertained, featuring adult content, explicit language and uncensored depiction of violent acts. Well, looking at our list today, we will be exploring 19 of the most ultra-violent and adult superhero shows in existence. Stay tuned till the end of this video to see if your favorite shows made it to the list or not. You ready for this? Let's roll! Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Boys When you have a classic superhero television series flipped upside down and the element of gore serving as the high point of the series, you know for a fact that it is most certainly not for the squeamish. Showrunner Eric Kripke's The Boys, which is based on Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson's graphic novel, also titled the same, was originally meant to be an anti-superhero story. What we have here is an Amazon Prime series, which is set in a universe where super-powered individuals are treated as heroes by the public and are seen working for the formidable Vought International that aims at marketing and monetizing them. A peek into the real personas of the superheroes and you will find them to be despicable, corrupt beings who are inclined towards using their abilities. Enter the eponymous team of blue-collar vigilantes, whose goal is to bring down Vought International along with its elite superhero team. For a series that primarily depends on elements of shock and jaw-dropping violence, it does cover exceeding lengths to demonstrate what it would be like to be on the receiving end of a superhero's superpowers. Let's talk about the inciting event, one that started it all. We are particularly stressing on the death scene of Huey Campbell's girlfriend, Robin Ward, in the hands of a Compound V charged up A-Train in the premiere episode. The sequence is appallingly gruesome, raucously violent and extremely inventive, may we add, one that is simply bound to leave you speechless. There is no pretense or restraints of anything. It will show you what you are getting into right away. But that is not enough. Huey is seen getting covered in innards for the second time, this time in the second episode itself, when he ends up detonating the bomb that the boys had planted inside Translucent's bum, post-capturing him. It was almost like Huey had a thing for innards, and you think this was the goriest moment on display. We seriously suggest that you think again. Our personal ultra-violent moment from The Boys has to be Popclaw. Yes, the secret girlfriend of A-Train, accidentally bursting her landlord's head like a watermelon after jabbing herself with the latest dose of Compound V and getting more than naughty with the landlord. Mind you, the scenes that we mentioned are all from the first season and now with the third season of The Boys out, all the gore hound fans out there know exactly where they are heading towards. Invincible. The eye for invincible and then there is the eye for immense leaning towards bloodshed. Mind you, both of them go parallel here. Adapted from Robert Kirkman's comic series also titled Invincible, this adult animated superhero TV series has teenager Mark Grayson, whose father Nolan, aka Omni-Man, happens to be the most powerful living being on the planet, boasting of an abundance of superpowers. Right after Mark's 17th birthday, his powers begin to manifest and it goes without saying that he is beyond keyed up about it. However, with a father hellbent on controlling Earth and a few dark secrets, we only wish Mark knew what was in store for him. While there is no denying that the plotline does seem simple and to top things further, the series happens to be a superhero animation, this is precisely where we'd like to suggest you not to judge this book, particularly by its cover. Invincible is seen taking superhero adult animations notches higher, giving it more drama, gore and an explosion of violence. Whatsoever was held back in the comic book series, Kirkman and showrunner Simon Ratchioppa made sure to surpass the source material and push things up so as to give the audience a real sense of what this show is truly all about. On display is content that is capable of making even the toughest superheroes turn away, and while Mark is seen battling against a generous number of supervillains and bringing about violent results, it is his supreme mustachioed father and his extensive acts of violence which gives the show its 18 plus rating. 
Let's take the pilot episode for example. Nolan is seen secretly and ruthlessly, may we add, slaughtering the guardians of the globe. The amount of graphical gore and brutality depicted in the particular sequence is bound to drop your jaws on the floor. And if that is not enough, he is even seen destroying an entire planet and calling it an act of retaliation right in the second episode. In simple words, you'd be smart not to piss off Omni-Man because those of you who have seen the series know how he went to the whole extent of beating up his own son when he refused to join him. The Punisher. Let's just begin this by saying that Steve Lightfoot's Marvel's The Punisher is crammed with the nastiest of fights, ones that are very much capable of making even the toughest of audience simply squirm while watching. Based on the Marvel Comics character Punisher, which is a creation of celebrated trio Jerry Conway, John V. Romita and Ross Andrew, this television series here happens to be a spin-off of Drew Goddard's Daredevil. The show follows the Marine veteran Frank Castle, galvanized by the horrific death of his family, killed by the Mafia, waging a one-man war on crime, thereby emerging as the most victorious vigilante to ever exist. Also, if we may add, his methods to get rid of the criminals are exceedingly gruesome. What we are looking at is a graphically gory and dark series that is just not meant for kids. We repeat, under no circumstance should children watch this unless they want to be scarred for the rest of their life. Backed by a stupendous performance of John Bernthal, The Punisher is packed with escalating levels of hyperviolence. We'd like to stress on glaring gunfights and badass brawls. We get the first big glance at his personality near the very end of the premiere episode titled Free Air. The scene, goes without saying, happens to be the easiest standout for the season and Frank with his sledgehammer gives us a peek right into the season's future bloodbath. Now, to see our titular character enduring pain is very different from seeing how much pain he likes to inflict on others. It is only fair to say that the sledgehammer sequence surely had the entire set dripping red. Putting further stress on the term ultra-violent, there is another particular scene that certainly deserves a mention. The fight between Frank and Billy Russo. To address their fight as epic would be an understatement. The fact that Frank went to the extent of pulling Billy's face down a broken mirror rendering it beyond recognition. And to top that, letting him live in the end and telling him that he is bound to remember him still gives us the chills. <laughs> Todd McFarlane's Spawn. With our focus on the ultra-violent adult superhero shows, it would be a cardinal sin to miss out on Todd McFarlane's Spawn that ran on HBO first and then reran on Toonami. Those who have read the comics and seen the television show will know for a fact that the animated series is not really a direct adaptation of the comics. Of course, the comics has seen influence in the storyline. We do have the government-trained assassin A.I. Simmons getting betrayed and killed only to end up making a deal with the devil and coming back as Hellspawn. But honestly speaking, it was more on the lines of drawing that moved McFarlane and made him the pioneer of some really new and cool ideas, which led this series to become a recipient of an Emmy Award back in the year 1999. The television show is filled with moments that firmly establish that Todd McFarlane's Spawn is way more than just another superhero story. There is a generous amount of violent action on display. Add to this the occasional killing sprees, a sick sense of humor, dialogues laced with obscenities, abundance of blood and gore, and explicit amounts of nudity, particularly around mobster Antonio Twistelli, popularly known as Tony Twist. Well, it's only fitting to address this series as hardcore and one that is certainly not for the faint of heart. Even for a cartoon, it is quite dark, daunting and nihilistic to be more precise. The high point of the series happens to be the first three episodes of the first season, which not only sets a new bar for adult animation, but also the encompassing dark mood. Daredevil Matt Murdock might have lost his eyesight as a boy in a tragic accident, but that only resulted in his other senses getting heightened. Or, in simple words, that is how he ended up getting super sensory powers. Drew Goddard's Daredevil, which is based on Stan Lee and Bill Everett's Marvel Comics character, also titled the same, was predetermined to be darker than most other Marvel projects, while focusing on a crime fiction style inspired by the films of the 1970s. The series follows the journey of the blind superhero, who is a lawyer by day, and a masked vigilante by night. And while he does not exactly kill criminals, there is a reason he is addressed as the man without fear. 
You are looking at a superhero, mind you, not the quintessential good guy superhero, but one who has a penchant for breaking bones and cracking skulls. He is more than ready to get his hands dirty, for instance, stabbing someone right in the eye and then casually throwing the person off a building isn't a big deal for him, especially if he feels that the latter deserves it. Come on now, you can't really have the series Daredevil without its more than fair share of ferocious content. We like to stress on bones popping right out of arms, a violent car door decapitation and a particular particularly nasty prison fight amongst many. As far as adult content is concerned, there's plenty, from side bosom shots, constant references to sexual themes, to a father letting his young son try alcohol. These specifically come under the category of some rather questionable content for the young audience. Peacemaker. Looks like showrunner James Gunn took his 2021 superhero flick titled The Suicide Squad a tad too seriously when he decided to go ahead with one of the characters from the movie towards a new direction. No points for guessing that we are obviously talking about the character Peacemaker, but here is a funny thing that we bet most of you were not aware of. You will actually be surprised to know that Gunn initially wanted Peacemaker's supposed death in the movie to be an irreversible one. But here we are, with a whole new series on him. The events of the television show are set right after the affairs of the 2021 flick, further exploring the bloodthirsty, jingoistic killer who, much like his name, believes in bringing about peace no matter at what cost. The storyline shows Peacemaker recuperating from his wounds and being literally coerced to becoming a mercenary for the US federal agency Argus, Black Ops Squad, Project Butterfly. What we are looking at is a raunchy spin-off, one that is definitely not kid-friendly. To begin with, Peacemaker is rated TV MA, and rightfully so, we may add. It's got every profane word that you can possibly think of. Add to this sexual illusions, racial slurs, full nudity, we repeat, full nudity, alcohol and drug usage, stinging satire on toxic masculinity, and a general share of violence, which includes bodies popping literally like balloons, faces getting blown off, and the regular gunfights and killings. While there is no denying that the series has its audience, what is certain is that it is not recommended for the young viewers. The Boys presents Diabolico. This is an adult animated superhero anthology series to begin with, and no points for guessing that the show serves as a spin-off for Eric Kripke's The Boys. The eight episodes on display happen to be a collection of emotionally shocking and irreverent standalone stories, each flaunting its unique animation style, and they are set in a universe unseen in the live-action series. The fact that the series is animated might give one the idea that it is cool for the kids to watch, but hey, let's not miss out on the term adult before animation here. And we will state to you more than enough reasons why it is not recommended for children. For starters, there is a hell of a lot of graphically unapologetic violence and dirty humour featured throughout the whole series. We are stressing on violence that is pretty close to what's depicted in the parent show. So technically speaking, The Boys Presents Diabolical is more like an addition to the ever-expanding R-rated animated genre. One actually gets to witness an already kicked into the farthest level of cartoonish violence right in the premiere episode, titled Laser Baby's Day Out. What is surprising is that there is no dialogue in this episode. Instead, there are these cartoonish sound effects, but that does not ice out the violence. We'd like to stress on a particular scene here, one of Vought's experimental superhero infants, the Laser Baby to be more precise, is broken out of the facility. For those of you who are wondering, it is just a baby, here's the thing. The baby we are stressing on is not capable of controlling her laser vision. So imagine what happens when she inadvertently ends up sneezing. Not only does this trigger her laser eye beams, but it also goes through the very intestines of a man, giving him a gruesome death. All the episodes stay true to their names, so no points for guessing what the second episode titled An Animated Short Where Pissed Off Soups Kill Their Parents is all about. Arrow. Based on the comics character Green Arrow and developed by the trio of Greg Berlanti, Mark Guggenheim and Andrew Kreisberg, this superhero TV series revolves around the young multimillionaire ladies' man Oliver Queen, who states to have spent five long years 
on the remote island of Lian Yu as a result of a violent shipwreck. He comes back home to Starling City now as a changed man and is determined to fight crime and corruption that plague his city as a masked vigilante, having mastered the skills of archery. The eventual transition of Oliver from a boy to a man and then to a murderer is the whole high point of the series. His methods of killing are so brutal that the cops after him literally wanted him in chains in the first place. The level of ultraviolence depicted here is a full 10 on 10 and fans of Arrowverse will agree with us when we tell them that amongst all the Arrowverse shows, Arrow has been the most violent, specifically known for its dark tone and brutal fight scenes. With every season, the show starts getting more intense and the level of action is taking up a notch higher. Remember when we said that Oliver Queen's weapon of choice is a bow and arrow? Naturally, there is a horde of some exceedingly vicious fights on display, which certainly deserve a mention. Fans have seen Oliver stabbing Slade Wilson in the eye with his arrow, chop off Malcolm Merlin's hand, and even go to the extent of savagely killing all of his enemies in order to keep his secret identity intact. The series is conclusively known for pushing the limits, and there is no denying it. Titans. Season 1 of the series made it very clear that Avika Goldsman, Jeffrey Johns and Greg Berlanti's Titans should not be confused with the team that all of us literally grew up watching on Cartoon Network. Based on co-creators Bob Haney and Bruno Premiani's superhero team, Teen Titans, the series has the young group of superheroes joining forces in their battle against evil. While the premise sounds simple, hear us out when we say that the plot is 10 times adult. We are stressing on foul language, heavy violence, and an enveloping dark tone, snapping of bones, people getting burnt, and bodies being mangled. Those of you who are looking at the young age of the cast, such as Dick Grayson, Starfire, Raven, Beast Boy, and Donna Troy, amongst the others, this series here isn't really targeting the younger audience at all. It would be a sheer mistake to do that. There is violence, there is gore, and when our heroes fight, they don't really hold back. For instance, Starfire is actually seen scorching people alive, and so you do get a hint the level of graphical violence which is depicted here. Also, with more characters getting introduced, the storyline has expanded. It is a lot bolder in terms of content. There is nudity, multiple F-bombs every now and then, blood in every episode, and drug usage. But if you ask us about the high points, that would be the epic fighting sequences. Watchmen. Damon Lindelof's superhero drama limited series is based on the 1986 comic book Maxi series, also titled Watchmen, by the terrific trio of Alan Moore, Dave Gibbons and John Higgins. It should not come as a surprise to those of you who have already read the supremely dark comic book that this television series here is actually a sequel to the comic. The events of the TV show are seen taking place in the same alternate reality but after a span of 34 years. It is obvious on the part of Lindelof to incorporate not just new characters but also clashes so as to create a new storyline and not a typical reboot. Watchmen revolves around political themes in a modern era. Or, to be more precise, the series focuses on the racist violence in Tulsa in 2019. When the primary topic in concern happens to be racial injustice, you know there's going to be extreme levels of violence, and plenty of it, may we add. We get a good glance at the series' racially charged plot right in the first episode. In fact, the opening sequence itself is absolutely brutal and harrowing. Out of the nine episodes on display, there are two particular ones which are fair to be addressed as flat-out masterpieces in terms of everything. While the first one happens to be the sixth episode, titled This Extraordinary Being, the second one happens to be the eighth episode, titled A God Walks Into a Bar. Honestly speaking, Watchmen has literally pushed the limits of what a genre in general is capable of doing, and while doing so, the series not even for once has shied away from anything. From head explosions to the savage squid rain system sequence, it is bold and bristling, and mark our words when we say it isn't an easy viewing. <laughs> Harley Quinn. This adult animated dark comedy superhero TV flick developed by the trio of Justin Halpern, Patrick Schumacher and Dean Laurie revolves around the misadventures of the titular character post her breakup with the Joker. Now when it comes to Harley Quinn setting out on her own as the criminal queen pin than that too in the city of Gotham, it is only natural on her part to leave behind a complete path of chaos and destruction. Brownie points to the series to have her team up with Poison Ivy. 
in this case Harley's eventual lover, to create the ultimate group of bad guys so as to join the esteemed Legion of Doom. What we are looking at is a series filled with extreme levels of violence. We'd like to stress on severed limbs, regular explosions, creative killings, heads actually getting bitten and thrashing someone to the whole extent of making a pulp out of him. As much as the last part sounds funny, given that it is an animated series we are talking about, please know that Harley Quinn is categorically a not-for-kids series. Also, let's not disregard the endless number of mature jokes that are featured here. You need a particular niche audience to understand and grasp what's happening. Luke Cage Also addressed as Marvel's Luke Cage, showrunner Chia Hodari Koker's television series is based on the popular Marvel Comics character Luke Cage and set in the MCU. The TV show has renowned actor Mike Coulter as the titular character, who, post a medical experiment gone wrong, becomes super powerful in terms of strength and even brags an unbreakable skin. This leads to Luke becoming a fugitive and rebuilding his life in Harlem. But with his past catching up with him, he is forced to confront things that he had long buried. Of course, there is a lot more to this story, but we'd like to leave the storyline here for viewers who are yet to watch this intriguing series. Also, at the same time, we'd like to put stress on what it is that makes this an ultra-violent adult superhero show. To begin with, the sole fact that Luke's body is impervious to not only bullets but also fire explosions gives one a fair idea that the series does depict a considerable level of violence and gore. Well, for someone who is seen to be fighting against crime and corruption, acts of violence are bound to go parallel with him, just so as to counter the attacks of his enemies. There is a lot of gun violence, aggressive fist punches, and men being set on fire first and then shot at point-blank range on display. For those looking for specifics, Throw in some knives too and you will find a number of characters viciously murdered throughout the series. The shocking death of the character of Cornell Cottonmouth Stokes is inevitably one of the high points of the TV series. Apart from the show's dark tone and atmosphere, there is also an abundance of profane language which is used here. Putting further stress on the adult content, there are plenty of scenes that come under acts of voyeurism. There are also some which feature full nudity although agreed that the private parts aren't exactly displayed. Last but not the least, Coulter himself has stated that the series is aimed at an adult audience and that it is dark and gritty, and so you know exactly what you are dealing with here. Doom Patrol Stop everything that you're doing right now and pay heed to us when we tell you that Jeremy Carver's Doom Patrol is a superhero TV series, one that is specifically made for the adults. It does not try hard to be mature as the content on display is primarily for the adults. Doom Patrol concerns an unlikely team of people, each struck by tragedy and ending up with unique powers in the process. The fact that their abilities aren't exactly society-friendly leads them to eventually becoming superpowered outcasts and the group is seen finding purpose through a certain medical officer who is addressed as the chief. In short, when you have a show that is about a group of superpowered misfits who have to learn how to control their powers and then work together as a team, there's bound to be some collateral damage. In this case, the damage comes in the form of severe levels of violence and gore. We have blood and brains getting splattered on the walls, heads getting crushed and flattened, a man getting ripped in half, another man getting beaten by the ripped man's lower half, torsos exploding, a dying man getting impaled, a person's head getting stomped on and thereby exploding. This list can go on and on. Besides violence, there are moderate levels of sex and nudity on display. Add to this, characters resorting to language to describe carnal activities in more graphical ways. Further stressing on the part that makes this superhero show adult is the severe use of profane language here. Literally all sorts and every kind you can think of. Last but not the least, not sure how many of you are okay seeing one of the primary characters decompose into what seems like a slime-like blob of skin every time she is stressed. Without a doubt, not for the squeamish. The Umbrella Academy This Netflix series here by Steve Blackman is based on the Dark Horse Comics graphic novel by the celebrated duo Gerard Way and Gabriel Barr. 
and concerns a highly dysfunctional family of adopted super-powered siblings, who are seen reuniting and probing deeper into the mysterious death of their abusive father. It is also during this that they realize that the world is about to come to an end and no points for guessing that things head towards a completely different direction from there. Well, it is only fitting to say that the Umbrella Academy has brilliantly managed to stand out from the rest of the superhero shows while dealing with heavy content, a significantly dark tone and an incredibly unusual sense of humor at the same time. So when we mentioned humor, we basically meant humorously violent murders, thereby pointing towards the series resorting to a comical approach to violence. But dare you bring out the wrath of this dysfunctional superhero family? Remember, they have never really shy away from violence. Speaking of violence, the series is filled with a horde of scenes which are graphic and for the mature audience. Right from exhibiting explicit details of one's brutal death, a man getting graphically stabbed in the eye, a massive number of groin attacks that had a particular scene where a man's groin is stabbed with a pencil, throats getting slashed with a violin bow and the gushing of blood that follows everyone in a meeting getting hacked to death by an axe and a large number of eyeballs on a tray. There are plenty of such bloody, gory violence on display all throughout the series. Season 3 is also reported to have a severe outburst of obscene language, but it is Season 2 which can be quite unsettling, solely because of the gore factor. Gotham Produced by Warner Brothers Television and developed by Bruno Heller, this superhero crime drama TV series is best to watch as an adult if you intend to grasp everything about it. What we are looking at is a series that chiefly follows James Gordon's early days working as a detective at the Gotham City Police Department, post to the very murders of Thomas and Martha Wayne. Gotham also takes its audience through the teenage days of Bruce Wayne, highlighting his grieving period after his parents' untimely death, as well as the origin stories of Batman's notorious rogues gallery. Scarecrow, Penguin, Riddler, Bane, Poison Ivy, the Joker and Mad Hatter amongst a few. It is true that this TV show here is recommended for every fan of Batman out there, but we highly suggest that kids be kept out of it. Mind you, this show here does not really feature superheroes as such. Those who have already seen Gotham will agree with us. It is an origin story of the greatest supervillains and vigilantes, disclosing to its audience a completely unexplored chapter. Speaking of violence, Gotham is immensely inclined towards bloodshed. We'd like to stress out on a few scenes here. We have a character's face being removed, stapled back and then punched off. The grisliest of death scenes, the bloodiest of gun and stab wounds on display. Professor Pig forcibly making a group of people eat pies made out of other people. The character of Leslie Lee Tompkins getting a hand slashed with a hammer and the graphical representation of it. A man stabbed in the throat with a spike of a high heel. A woman scooping her eye out with just a spoon. A guy simply chopping off a woman's head. Several people getting burnt and frozen to death and the penguin getting his eye blown up. The list does not end here, and if you ask us, the most graphic scene is from the 8th episode titled Blood Rush from Season 3, which shows a cleaner dissolving body parts in what looks like a vat of acid. Later, it's the same cleaner who is found out by another man and then literally torn apart, limb from limb, in the bloodiest manner possible. Black Lightning Selima Kills superhero drama TV series is based on the DC Comics character also titled Black Lightning, who first made an appearance during the Bronze Age of comic books. The television series sees the titular character retired, only to make a comeback and spring into action once again as the superhero that he was known as. What we are looking at is a TV show which is dark, gritty, realistic and a lot character driven, if we may add. Naturally, there are the elements that point towards a mature audience, and to this, Black Lightning, aka Jefferson Pierce's age factor, he is easily the oldest superhero to appear on his own show. Now, when the focus is on an older superhero, the series, pretty obviously, will entice the slightly older audience. So, what is it that makes this show here different from the rest of the superhero shows? Well, the main difference lies in the storytelling and the city of Freeland. This particular city in Georgia, as depicted in the series, is filled with violence and corruption, both in capital letters. For instance, a man ripping out another man's ear, 
the frequent usage of gun by the gang members and tasers by the racist police, someone's spine getting ripped out, several up and close death scenes and a man thrown in a tank by a crime boss that is filled with piranhas. These are specifically for the audience who can take things. It would be fair to say that Black Lightning features themes that are mature, racial tension, gang violence, prostitution, drug usage, alcohol abuse and social justice issues among other things. Preacher, developed by Ivan Goldberg, Sam Catlin and Seth Rogen, this supernatural adventure TV series here is based on the comic book series also titled the same and created by the celebrated duo Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon. We have a preacher called Jesse Custer who is, in all probability, unlike any preacher you have ever crossed paths with. Besides being a heavy drinker and a chain smoker, Custer has this extraordinary ability of making anyone, for that matter, do whatever he says. He is seen embarking on a journey to comprehend his super abilities and also find God. Literally, in this journey, he is joined by his unpredictable girlfriend, Tulip O'Hare, and a vampire friend. Princess Cassidy. While it is true that the TV series does not live up to the comics, Preacher has every element to keep you thoroughly invested. We'd like to begin with the severity of violence and gore on display. A lot of heads exploding and some getting squished. A person jumping out of a plane which results in him getting reduced to a head and an arm in a heap of guts and intestines. Body parts getting severed with a chainsaw. Tongues getting ripped out. Testicles getting electrocuted. A woman getting torn in half. A nasty bar shootout. Out, a mother cutting open her daughter's stomach in order to take out something that she ate. Puppies and guinea pigs being eaten alive. In short, there is no end to this disturbingly gory list. Oh, in case we missed out, there is also this particular scene that has a person bursting and his entrails splatter all over the room. We'd like to emphasize on his intestines sliding down the wall, rectum hanging from the ceiling, and to top things, two men are seen wrestling in that pile of guts and making use of the organs as weapons. We can't possibly think of any other scene that is as ultra-violent as this. Next, we have almost every episode containing male nudity. In fact, there are actually derogatory ways of describing sex as well as engaging in such practices. Preacher has a strong sexual content on display throughout and the series is also both blasphemous and outrageous to a whole different level. Imagine a guy who actually has a buttock for a mouth. No, we are not even remotely kidding about this. Another scene definitely deserves a mention. We have mentioned this before, that a person explodes and his entrails are everywhere. A close-up shot of just his anal cavity shows it farting initially, and then defecating someone's soul out. To all those who still have not seen Preacher, and we highly doubt if there's any left, we highly recommend that you take out some time and stream it on Prime Video. <laughs> Ragnarok. Adam Price's Norwegian fantasy drama TV series here is basically a reimagining of the old Norse mythology. The events of Ragnarok take place in the fictitious Norwegian small town Edda, which is afflicted by a drastically changing climate. We are stressing on melting glaciers, warm winters and long periods of drought, amongst many. Of course, the world is changing and it is a possibility that the inhabitants of the town are heading towards the end of the world. This, however, can be stopped with the intervention of somebody. Well, we are going to stop right there with the storyline because those of you who are yet to watch Ragnarok don't even have the slightest bit of idea what's in store. So let's keep it that way. Mind you, there is more of a coming-of-age take on an old mythology. So don't be surprised if we tell you that the series has its fair share of gore and violence on display. For instance, there is a scene that depicts a naked man devouring a raw heart that he ripped from an animal. It is graphic and the scene can be quite sensitive for some viewers. There is also this particular scene that shows a family abusing their only daughter and another where a man is seen viciously hitting his son. Both the sequences are intense. In fact, the former is actually frightening, may we add. Why not see it for yourself and let us know what your thoughts are about it?
The Defenders, also known as Marvel's The Defenders, this TV miniseries here is created by the duo Douglas Petri and Marco Ramirez and is primarily based on the characters Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones and Iron Fist. It would only be fair to address this series as a crossover event, one that is seen incorporating not only the actions but also the themes of all the shows of the respective characters. Now, as far as this storyline is concerned, the Vigilantes are seen joining forces in New York City and going against their own common enemy, who happens to be none other than the supervillain, The Hand. Putting stress on the characters mentioned, this can only mean one simple thing, intense levels of violence and gore on screen. There are two very graphic decapitations which are bound to leave a scar on your mind. There is also this scene where a man is actually seen cutting open a bear that he killed and then removing the organs from inside. It is absolutely gory and even nauseating to be honest. Apart from these, there is no end to the number of dead bodies in their bloodiest possible state that are seen all through the series. In short, the content on display is not appropriate for the younger audience. With this, we have come to the very end of our video here. Do let us know if you agree with our lists. We'd be happy to know if you have anything that you think we missed out. Also, please don't hesitate from leaving your thoughts in the comment section. Till then, stay tuned in with us for more interesting content. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.